Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. What a, a great place, right? Lisbon, what a great event. How many great people here to, to go and build fantastic companies, right? Um, I want to talk to you today about Lilium, and, and I truly believe it's going to be one of the next big European champions, and I hope many people here in this room will play a part uh, over time. At Lilium, we believe in a world where everybody can fly anywhere, anytime. And, and what we specifically aim with that is um, it creates urban flying. So, so we, we are talking about a world where for the first time flying really starts becoming a day-to-day -day activity. A lot of us, we fly from time to time, but it's not really what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and therefore it needs to be also for everyone. So there needs to be something that is affordable um, and, and, and really create that change. But why is it important, right? We, we live in an urbanized world. Uh, five billion people living there and, and they're great centers of innovation. I, I love large cities. They're, they're creating culture, innovation and, and exchange. But of course, they come also with their, their challenges. One of them uh, is being traffic, right? In, in some places, we're going down to, to very slow speeds, uh, like at the times of the horse and carriages, right? We're almost doing full circle to, to, to when we had a speed up of time to, to having a slowdown of time. And how do we solve that, right? Can we increase our infrastructure? Is it actually still possible to, to cram in more roads and more rail? Of course, we can build more tunnels. Um, and, and I think that is great, and, and I think we should continue to do that. But um, they're also very, very expensive to build and, of course, to, to maintain. So what's the solution, right? So we all dreamed about it, right? Flying cars, that's really the solution. We always, always wanted them, but um, is it really a solution or is it actually the worst of both worlds, right? Um, what is a flying car? In my mind, is actually a bad car and a bad plane because, on the one hand, it's probably not optimized for flying, and on the other hand, it's probably not optimized for, for driving. And what if you have a little bit of a bump there when you try to, 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 to shimmy in your, your car into the parking lot? Is it still safe to fly? So, so how do we think about Lilium then, uh, at Lilium about this problem? What, what do we actually try to solve? And what are the key tenants that we, we were putting in place? We think that the solution to the problem, obviously, it has to be clean. I, we, we believe that the world cannot can continue, can, continue burning fossil fuels. We, we need to create solutions that are 100% clean, and, and, and that means also electric, with, with all of its um, drawbacks that might be still today, but it is improving. So, but also, it needs to be quiet, right? Noise is a pollutant, so, so we need to, to think about creating solutions that do not make our lives worse by, by adding noise to it. It's got to be fast. So we're talking about a world where you can start flying at 300 kilometers per hour and uh, with a Lilium jet for, for, for 300 kilometers. But um, also when we start flying, we, we start not having to take the bendy roads anymore, but we can start connecting places uh, in a totally different way. As I said, for everyone, think about, for those that are familiar with the Bay Area, you can travel uh, in a totally new way in just 10 minutes between San Francisco and Palo Alto. And that for the same cost uh, as it would be in an, in an Uber or in a Lyft ride. That is real true change, right? Uh, you're not stuck in traffic for an hour, an hour and a half. And, 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 and you can do that um, in a similar cost that, that is already there today. So we're talking about a world where you are going to be connected wherever you are. Where, where we don't need to build the pieces that are in, in, in between, but when, when we can start being um, a small town somewhere and you can start connecting yourself into something bigger. And how are we going to do that, right? We are going to, to build a solution that is easy to use. And that's also one of the reasons why I'm here, and then you'll see that in a second, right? We are um, going to create a mobility service, something that is uh, um, uh, easy to order on your phone. It's, it's a totally new way of getting from A to B. And of course, there needs to be uh, the digital tech that it needs to be created. There needs to be the whole um, the back end. How do you operate with the airspace? How do you actually operate with the ground? Um, so, so we're talking about a digital solution, a mobility solution at Lilium. And how are we going to use that? Of course, you also need a, quite an essential bit. You do need a plane. So what we are building at Lilium is a five-seater vertical takeoff and landing jet, and, and that is the first of its kind. It's, uh, it's fully electrically powered, uh, and it can travel 300 kilometers at, at 300 kilometers per hour. You might think, yeah, maybe, maybe one day, right? Hmm. But the, the reality is we have been flying since January 2017. 
So what you're seeing here is uh, when it first took off the, the aircraft, so, so this was our original two-seater prototype. It's exactly the same concept, but you're seeing the engines are pointing down and, and the aircraft lifts off, similar to, to a drone. And then comes the, the real trick here. At this point in time, uh, the aircraft starts going into forward flight, what we call transition flying. And that's the, the, the real critical trick in, in aviation. It's one of the hardest things you can do. And, and many people have tried, and it's something that is very difficult to control. But the impact is enormous. It creates about a, um, an eight times less energy need when you start using your wings and flying forward. Because the, the, the physics of the wings, you start creating aerodynamic lift. And therefore, we're talking about uh, a range of, of being able to fly 300 kilometers. And that is on, on similar battery technologies than what we have today in, in, in the more performant uh, electric cars and on similar batteries than how other people are talking more about the ranges of, of 30, 40 kilometers. And then it seamlessly transitions back into, into something that is extremely well uh, controlled, something that you can probably very easily imagine in your cities, in, in your towns, right? When, when you have these aircraft, they don't need to continue to fly at 200 kilometers an hour uh, in order to hit the runway. So these aircrafts are going to be extremely easily maneuverable. They can actually um, land on, on very small places, right? So, so you need um, the size of, of a helicopter pad uh, for it to land. So as it lands, of course, uh, engines are gonna be shut off. So, so you're also not gonna have that type of experience as in an airport where we can continue having noise. So that's the jet, right? It flies. Um, how have you been thinking about this? <laughs> that's how have you been thinking about this, right? The team has been thinking from a, a simplicity standpoint uh, throughout. What you've just seen does not have a tail rudder. It does not have lots of things that you find in, in a traditional helicopter or, or aircraft. So, so by leaving lots of things away, by creating something that is simpler, we will be able to produce more of them. We will be able to, to create something that is very easy to maintain because, of course, it is aviation. You need to maintain things and you need to, uh, to create the safety. Um, you also need to, to get it certified and, and therefore, um, it's easier to do that uh, the fewer parts you have. So lots of things have been um, uh, left out in that aircraft and, of course, it still flies. And that is, uh, for those that do coding, right, the simplest codes is very often the, the ones with the fewest lines. What it hinges on is, is 36 engines. So, so there's 36 ducted fans, and that's where we are the, the first ones in the world to do that. Um, they, they're creating a tremendous advantage. One, you can fly very fast. Two, they're creating a very low vibration noise. So, so it's a very similar experience than in traditional aircraft. Those familiar, if anybody flew with a helicopter uh, ever, like the, this, it creates sort of a flapping noise. Um, this is not going to be the case. It's going to be a much smoother ride by, by using this technology. But also, of course, it's a safety aspect, right? If, if you do happen to, to lose one of these blades, uh, because it is ducted, it's not going to, to impact the other, uh, the other engines. And that is one of the, the most critical things in, in, in this new world where we are thinking about flying in cities, flying where people live in, in very urban and, and densely populated areas. It has to be safe, and, and that was one of the core principles that we put in, in place in, in, the, in the company. So, so we're talking about an aircraft that is going to be as safe as your A320 or whatever aircraft you use to, to come here. Um, it's, uh, how do you achieve that is you're, you're building a system that everything is uh, possible to, to fail, and, and there's always a second system or a third system to take over the job of the others. That's really how you do aviation. Um, so, so you can finish the mission and, and get to, to, to where you actually want to, to land. And that's also important because only like that we can go and certify this. So you might actually ask yourself, well, you know, that's, that's future, that's dreaming, right? But there is today certification available for this type of aircraft. And that is because of the safety level, but also because we are going to have pilots in these aircraft uh, certainly at the beginning. Whilst uh, we have, of course, an autonomous roadmap and they will fly in an autonomous way. And, and as we are scaling up, um, the, the aircrafts first have pilots in there, hence the five-seater. So we still have a family of four that we can transport and, and get people from A to B. So this technology is possible. This technology is possible tomorrow. Um, of course, we still need to build it. Uh, we, we need to build the next generation and, and finish that, but then we can start and go flying. Even the regulation to take off and land in places exists. It's in, uh, you just need a helipad, and that is not any new regulation that is actually existing planning law in order for this to, to go and happen. So 
But let's talk about what, what, what does that actually mean, right? So, so we are um, talking actually about infrastructure here. Right? I've been talking about mobility, but in the end, we're starting to talk about infrastructure. We are talking about um, reimagining and rethinking our, our mobility infrastructure. And this is what it today looks like, right? A lot of roads, very, uh, very dense. And in our mind, this is really what, what the new infrastructure in the future is going to look like. So, so you don't have to, to cut through the forests and the fields and, and create more roads and create more uh, connectivity because you can access what's in between, what's the space. And the, 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 the capacity in the space is, is tremendous, right? You have a third dimension, you can stack aircraft, you can uh, with some smart technology, and, and that is already, a lot of it is happening through the drone innovation. Um, a lot of technology is coming on, on airspace management, right? It's also an area that we are going to heavily invest in, in terms of how are these aircraft going to be coordinated, but uh, a tremendous amount of capacity there is in, in the air that, that we can go and access. And of course, I wasn't entirely fair, right? We're not going to need no infrastructure, right? You still need a, an A and, and a B. But, but even then, we are talking about the ability to, to, uh, to construct these, these networks about a thousand times, if not 10,000 times cheaper than what we have seen uh, to date when we start talking about high speed, um, high speed connectivity. To give you one example, um, there was just recently, uh, the, there was a, a line plan between Singapore and Kuala Lumpur happens to be 300 kilometers, should have cost $32 billion and was canceled because it was deemed uh, too expensive. And we believe we could do something very similar for about $200 million. So that is just the infrastructure pieces on the, on the one end and on the other end. And then of course you still need to build jets and, and start uh, creating a service. But instead of having a project that takes 20 years and, and endless planning um, permissions, you need to just build those two, those two parts. And that's not where the story ends. You add another third part and a fourth part, and, and by the way, they're equally well connected to all the other parts. So, so you are talking about the, the infrastructure being able to grow um, in a non-linear way, right? This is going to be a quadratic growth, and that is going to make it affordable for private enterprise to, to, to reimagine how we're moving around, to reimagine mobility. And, and, and of course, there will be lots of players coming in to do that, and uh, we, we encourage uh, ultimately that that, that uh, ecosystem development. So that means, think of, of uh, entire areas starting to, to believe and, and to work like, like really connected spaces. So, so you can take, take uh, for those from England, you, the whole of uh, South of England could become actually one uh, metropolis area. You can uh, look at um, areas and, and metropolitan areas in, in a totally different way because actually one of the things we have seen in, 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 uh, over time is as the speed of your transportation grows, um, the people will travel further distances. It's actually about the time that we're spending every day in order to get from A to B. That is much more the, the limiting factor. And we're all having um, the time budget that we set to ourselves. Uh, for some lucky ones, it's 15 minutes. For some unlucky ones, it's, it's two hours uh, or more every day that they're willing to spend to, to get to, to the place of, of work or the place of business. And so, that has impact on real estate, right? We, we are thinking about a world where um, you can start thinking uh, totally different newly connected city centers with, with um, some satellite towns that might be um, able to, to all of them be linked within 10 minutes. And, and by the way, they can do it themselves. They don't depend on a government to build a, an underground railway uh, for it to be easily connected uh, to the place. It means cities can start collaborating in a different way. And, I'm personally a big fan of collaboration and, and that very often comes through the exchange, that comes also through the, the, the physical uh, being present together. And, and by making that simpler, of course, it creates the totally new opportunities. So in summary, we were talking, we were seeing this as, a, as, a, as an entirely um, new transportation ecosystem. And, and within that uh, ecosystem, what you're seeing is, uh, is it's a number of, uh, of players developing. Right? So, so the way to understand this, you have uh, some people that will create the platforms. You will have people that will create the new uh, types of uh, flying, uh, flying aircraft, right? Uh, and then you'll have a whole range of people that will, on the one hand, look at the infrastructure. Um, they might look at uh, being suppliers to, to this market. They might look at, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the services that are on the ground as you're entering and you're getting to, to a location. 
And, and in there, we are currently seeing a number of different trends. Of course, in the, in the technology side, we believe we have a very cutting edge, edge technology. Um, in the um, space of, of the people that create the aircraft, there's gonna be two very major shifts of the technology. One is um, more like drone-based technologies, which will um, uh, just hover and then will, uh, by, by nature, by the nature of the laws of physics, be um, sort of limited in terms of the range. And then you have a number of players that are working on, on exactly this transition type of technology. And that's, uh, in, in our opinion, of course, where, where it gets very interesting because you can serve both markets. You can serve um, uh, short distance markets, but also long distance markets. But at the end of the day, what's important for us is there are gonna be lots of different innovation. There's going to be lots of different players and, and there's going to be lots of people that will say like, this is a great idea and I will go and, and create new infrastructure. I will go and create new landing pads. And, and we're seeing that when we're talking to um, different cities, different states, the, the, the realization is there that actually this sol solves some, some tremendous um, challenges that we're having in, in some of these places. Now, timeline-wise, um, we are talking about 2025, at which point we believe in several locations around the world, this type of technology will be a, a real day-to-day -day reality. So that means probably not going to be everywhere by that time. So, so it's almost 2019. So, so we're talking about um, six years at which, and by, by proper service, I mean um, at which a number of probably hundreds of different aircraft is going to fly in a single location. That means for us, and I think that that's the exciting bit, right? We are working on uh, creating that, um, the new engineering of the aircraft. And then simultaneously, we are working on the, the whole industrialization of the aircraft. And then lastly, um, and that's already where things are starting, is we're building the whole digital application of the, of the aircraft, right? creating uh, an absolutely novel uh, user experience. And, and bringing all of those three together is, is of course, uh, for, for those in the room that are interested in that space, a tremendous challenge, right? Um, even like creating the, the, that end-to-end -end, um, thinking and, and being able to, to be part of um, are we aerospace or are we automotive, right? The, that's where um, we are um, uh, positioned in. Because uh, when you look at aerospace, they produce very few cars, per, very few airplanes per year. When you look at automotive, they, they produce millions of, of cars every year. And this type of technology is uh, placed somewhere in the middle. So, so that means uh, where we're working on is, is a lot of um, industry 4.0 methods. How do we actually really create absolute high-end uh, robotics automation and how we're not only just uh, designing and engineering a new aircraft, but uh, creating the ability to, to manufacture lots of them. And then last but not least, of course, putting them into service and, and creating what I call the, the radius of life. For me personally, I live there on the, on the right-hand side. And, and what, what we're talking about is within half an hour, I can be on the left-hand side. So ask yourselves the question, wherever you live, wherever you are, um, where could you be in 30 minutes, in, in one hour, right? And that with this type of new technology means you can be 300 kilometers away, you can, uh, uh, you can totally uh, transcend mountains, you can get over, over lakes, you can get over all sorts of other barriers. And that creates in our mind a totally new world, a totally new radius of life. And with that, I, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.